from Washington, this is VOA News. President Obama outlines counterterrorism efforts and use of drones. Terror suspects in Britain are known to police. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. In a major address at the National Defense University in Washington Thursday, President Obama described a framework for ongoing counterterrorism efforts, including the use of drones and direct lethal action against terrorists. White House correspondent Dan Robinson reports. As the U.S. ends its military involvement in Afghanistan, he said al-Qaeda's core in Afghanistan and Pakistan is on a path to defeat. He said there have been no large-scale attacks on the United States. Mr. Obama said other threats have emerged, including al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, along with other localized groups and radicalized individuals in the United States. Mr. Obama called the use of drones effective, saying they have disrupted many plots and said they are legal, noting America was attacked on September 11, 2001. But he acknowledged that the new technology raises profound questions and the risk of creating new enemies. Dan Robinson, VOA News, the White House. A prominent Syrian opposition figure is proposing a transition plan for the war-torn country. It requires President Bashar al-Assad to hand power to a senior aide and leave the country with 500 supporters. The outgoing head of the main opposition Syrian National Coalition, Moaz al-Khatib, published the plan on his Facebook page Thursday. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry met separately Thursday with Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas as part of the Obama administration efforts to jumpstart peace talks. VOA's Scott Stearns has details. Netanyahu commended U.S. congressional moves to upgrade sanctions against Tehran and recommit the United States to standing with Israel against the threat of Iran's nuclear program. But above all, he said, what we want to do is to restart the peace talks with the Palestinians. Kerry met separately with Palestinian President Abbas in the West Bank, but neither man spoke with reporters ahead of those talks. Chief Palestinian negotiator Saeed Arakat told the United Nations Committee this week that Palestinians are exerting every possible effort to see that U.S. peace efforts succeed. Arakat said there's a good opportunity now to get to a two-state solution to the conflict roughly along pre-1967 boundaries. Scott Stearns, VOA News, Ramallah, the West Bank. Senior British officials say the two men detained for the gruesome murder of an off-duty British soldier on a London street had been identified earlier by security teams investigating suspected Islamist extremists. The victim, a 25-year-old father named Lee Rigby, who had served in Afghanistan, died at the scene. The two suspects were shot and wounded by police. Media reports cite British Muslim hardliners and acquaintances who identified one of the suspects as a 28-year-old of Nigerian descent. United Nations Chief Ban Ki-moon wrapped up a visit to war-torn eastern Congo, where the United Nations and World Bank are making new efforts to end years of deadly conflict. Speaking in Goma, Mr. Bon and World Bank President Jim Young Kim said that investment and development are the keys to bringing peace to the region. Mr. Bond's visit Thursday took place just hours after a halt in fighting between government troops and the local rebel group M23. Moore, Oklahoma held the first funeral for a victim of last Monday's devastating tornado, a nine-year-old girl killed when the storm tore apart her elementary school. She was one of 24 people who died when the twister destroyed entire neighborhoods of the town near Oklahoma City. More than 300 people were injured. Estimates put the damage in Moore at $2 billion. President Obama plans to visit Moore on Sunday. By the middle of this century, two-thirds of the world's population will live in cities, posing a major environmental challenge. But a new report shows how developing so-called green cities 
can generate growth and lead to a more sustainable planet. Lisa Bryant has more. A new study published by the Paris-based Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development suggests greening cities by increasing their environmental performance can also be good for the economy. The new study largely focuses on strategies that have already proven successful, like building ecological districts, imposing congestion charges on vehicles, and creating green buildings building industries in western cities like Paris, Stockholm, and Chicago. But the next phase of the OECD's research will target cities in emerging Asian economies. Lisa Bryant for VOA News, Paris. And I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. There's more on the internet at voanews.com.